On this front, I think that you have a, a Republican Party who, while, they, while I think a lot of them want to work with them on tax policy, trade, there's a, some things I think you'll see. I think they think that uh, immigration will tear their own party mm -hmm. apart. And I think that they will feel they have to confront the president here. What I'm saying is the president is going to know that if he does this, he is starting a war, political war in Washington between yeah. the White House and I the Republican Congress. Of course, uh, Chuck Todd there talking about an executive order on uh, amnesty. Joining us now is uh, Peter Weiner. He's worked in the last three Republican administrations, and he's a columnist for Commentary Magazine, senior fellow at the Ethics and Public Policy Center. Hello, Peter. How are you? I'm good. Okay, so, so let's talk about, uh, before we get to your great piece, Obama's extraordinary damage to his party, uh, I, I want to I touch on this a little bit. Um, how did um, previous presidents that you've worked for react to this kind of situation? As, and, 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 and how does that contrast with, uh, with Obama? Well, I think for the most part, uh, presidents I've worked for and presidents I haven't worked for have reacted by, by adjusting. I mean, Bill Clinton, after the 94 debacle uh, for his party, um, made changes and began to govern from the center and move toward welfare reform and other things. President Bush, after the 2006 midterm elections, made adjustments on, on Iraq. Uh, President Reagan made some adjustments uh, after, uh, after 1982. Uh, that doesn't mean that somebody has to th you know, throw out their, their governing philosophy and undo everything, but it means that... The public is sending you a message when you have a repudiation of this size and breadth and depth that President Obama had. And, uh, you know, if you're a politician, it probably makes a lot of sense to, to uh, listen to that, to internalize it, and to make adjustments in light of it. We'll see whether President Obama does that. My suspicion is he will not. He did not do that in 2010, which was an epically bad midterm election for Democrats. He's now done that twice in a row. He's the first president in uh, in a half century to have two back-to-back -back awful midterm elections and i suspect that uh, he's a man of, of uh, unusual inflexibility uh, cognitive rigidity deep ideological commitments and i think that uh, he's going to say to hell with it i want to do what i want to do and it's not going to be good for his presidency or for the country all right well th and that's very well said i love the way you described him uh... now let's talk about uh... the damage he has done to his party and and the damage that that yes or no, would do to his party going forward uh, if he were to, if, for instance, sign that, uh, that amnesty bill uh, that, as Chuck Todd said, <laughs> and if Chuck Todd is saying it, would be, you know, a declaration of war uh, against uh, the Republicans and any kind of bipartisanship. Yeah, in terms of the damage to his party, I, I just think it's considerable. If you go through and say, what is the state of the Democratic Party um, at the end of the Obama presidency, which, which we now know what the composition will be versus the beginning, it's, it's really catastrophic. I mean, huge number of Senate losses, uh, you know, 15 House seats, almost 70, nine governorships. Those are all net losses for Democrats from, uh, from where Obama was to where, where he'll end up. That's, that's a lot for a party to sustain. Uh, now, he's not responsible for all of it, but he's, the, but he's responsible primarily for it because he is, he is the president. He's, he's at the top of the, uh, the ticket. So I think that the damage that he's done to his, his party is enormous. I think he's the greatest Democratic wrecking ball since Ronald Reagan uh, for, entirely <laughs> different, uh, for entirely different reasons. Uh, you know, if, in terms of going forward, we'll see. Uh, there's a lot of talk right now about, about uh, potential bipartisanship and can they work together and so forth. That proposition will be tested. I'll tell you one thing. If President Obama goes forward with this uh, executive order, order amnesty uh, during, during the lame duck session or even after it, uh, that's just going to detonate uh, any goodwill that there might be. It's going to uh, do a lot of harm to any, any other bills and legislation that they could work together. And it will reveal his mindset, right, which is that this guy just – wants to do what he wants to do, I think he's really becoming disassociated from reality. Uh, I think that he lives in this, in this uh, isolated world. I think he's becoming increasingly sullen and frustrated. He believes that he's too good for America, uh, I think, on some deep level. He went in. He wanted to transform America. He's been a failure. His party has been injured rather than taking responsibility for it. I think that he believes that that he's surrounded by people who are petty and small-minded and don't really appreciate his full greatness. Uh, and so I think that he's also s surrounded himself with, 
with a kind of increasingly small shrinking group of, of courtiers, of sycophants, um, and they're trying to tell each other what they wish were the case rather than what is the case. So I don't expect him to change. Um, Republicans, I think, should still put forward a, a, a really uh, far-reaching, responsible the agenda, yeah. Agenda, and yeah. and and they can do that. They can't control what Obama does. Right, they right. Can they control can control what they do. Right. And Peter, I got to tell you, I wish we could. Did everything you just said, I'm going to send it to a good shrink that I know, and I want to come up with a diagnosis for everything that you just uh, you just uh, put on Barack Obama because you said it so eloquently and accurately. Peter, thank you. Great talking to you, sir. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate my, it. My pleasure. All right, we'll be back, folks, with more of the Steve Malsberg Show right after this.